Hello and welcome to another edition of Tuesdays with the Disability Policy for All. I'm really excited to be interviewing Tom San... San... Sandro. Okay, thank you. Who is the director of the Institute for Community Inclusion, one of the uses in Massachusetts. Today we will be talking with him about his experience as a state legislator. So welcome, Tom. Thank you, Liz. Thank you for inviting me to your show. I'm really happy to be here and to talk to you. The first question is, how did you get involved in the state legislature in Massachusetts? So I have a son who's now 33 who has Down syndrome. And when he was young, we were having a challenge getting him educated in our town, which is a small town in Massachusetts. And because of that, I got politically involved. I was in this the Parent Advisory Council for Special Education, and then I ended up on school committee. And that's the school board in Massachusetts. From the school board, um, I learned a lot about policy and about education. Um, and then there was an opening in our state legislature in Massachusetts. I didn't think that people with intellectual disabilities had good enough voice or representation in that body. So I wanted to run to make sure that the interests of people with intellectual disabilities was there and represented in the legislature. Um, I was elected, I served for 12 years, and during that time period, probably the most fulfilling for me was the impact we made for individuals with intellectual disabilities in Massachusetts and hopefully outside of Massachusetts. So we changed a number of special education laws to improve educational outcomes. One of the, the big bills that I had, we called the Real Lives Bill, which allowed individuals with intellectual disabilities to control their own money, essentially to hire their own people, determine where they were gonna live, what they were gonna do during the day, what they would do for work, but give people with intellectual disabilities control over their money so they could control their lives. That's so fascinating. And um, I'm so happy that you shared that story with us. The next question is how how has your experience being a parent of a person with a disability shaped your experience as a state legislator? The biggest thing was that having, you know, essentially grown up with my son in a lot of ways, um, saw that a lot of the issues and problems he had had nothing to do with his abilities. And I think that was the most dramatic for me, was that usually it was people's perceptions or prejudice around disabilities or intellectual disabilities that really created the problems for him. So when I was in the legislature, I was always looking to how do we empower individuals with intellectual disabilities to be full members of our society and to not exclude them and to give them the power that they needed to control their own lives. I knew that, that individuals with intellectual disabilities needed to be seen and treated as equals to everyone else in the society. Um, one of the things that, that I was also very proud of in the legislature is that we were able to create, um, in Massachusetts, the first publicly funded a model for individuals with intellectual disabilities to attend our public colleges and universities. And since we began that program, we have probably had um, well over a thousand individuals with intellectual disabilities attend our public colleges and universities. The last question is, how has your experience as 
in the state legislature been helpful in your role now as the director of the Institute for Community Inclusion? So part of our role, as a you said, is to disseminate information and also to educate our elected officials on issues regarding disability. And having been on the other side of that, I have some understanding of what can be effective for them and how to, to deal with them as we move ahead. Um, the other side as being the director, I see the sort of larger policy pieces um, that I'm interested in moving and we're interested in moving as an organization, particularly around sheltered work and meaningful inclusion in work and in people's neighborhoods. That, that I think one of the challenges we have is that people, even though they live in neighborhoods like everyone else, frequently they don't know their neighbors and there's not an opportunity for them to engage meaningfully in their community. So that's an area that from my policy perspective, I see that we need to move and the Institute for Community Inclusion at UMass Boston is making every effort to, to move that agenda. Thank you. And believe me, I'll do my best to help you. Great. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Tom, for making the time to talk with us and see you next week.